Right now, Georgia's two Republican senators who are both in runoff races to keep their seats, they want the Republican running elections in their state to quit. NBC's Priscilla Thompson is in Atlanta. Uh, Priscilla, votes still being counted there in Georgia. Uh, wh what's happening and, and why? Well, Craig, not only are votes still being counted here, but this runoff is already underway. People are requesting their absentee ballots for that race uh, now. Counties will begin sending them out next week. And so that is the, the situation in which we're in as Senators Leffler and Purdue are calling on the highest election official in the state to resign. Uh, and they sent that letter out yesterday afternoon saying that the Secretary of State has mismanaged the election here, that he has not been transparent, though notably they didn't cite any specific evidence or examples uh, to attest to that. And the Secretary of State has responded, pushing back on those claims and saying unequivocally that he has no intention of resigning. He released a statement writing in part, quote, the voters of Georgia hired me and the voters will be the one to fire me. As Secretary of State, I'll continue to fight every day to ensure fair elections in Georgia, that every legal vote counts and that illegal votes don't count. And then he closes the letter saying, as a Republican, I am concerned about Republicans keeping the U.S. Senate. I recommend that Senators Leffler and Purdue start focusing on that. So a very sharp response from the Secretary of State. And I should point out that all of this is happening as just this morning, the Trump campaign and their recount efforts led by Representative Doug Collins have signaled that not only are they going to request a recount, but they want the nearly 5 million ballots cast here to be counted by hand. And so that is what uh, the Secretary of State's office is dealing with as these senators are calling on uh, the Secretary of State to resign. Craig? Priscilla Thompson in Atlanta. Priscilla, thank you. Let's turn now to Michael Steele, former RNC chairman, uh, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project. So, Michael, you've got Senators Perdue and Leffler fighting with Republican officials in their own state. Is, is this just a gift to Democrats? What's happening here? No, it, it's it's not a gift uh, in that sense, but it, what it does show that the Georgia race is less about the presidential because in terms of the outcome of Biden versus uh, Trump, uh, Georgia is not going to be a factor, particularly given where we are with the, the you know, Pennsylvania and what's going on uh, in Arizona. Um, so this is really about the Senate race. This is really about the Senate and, and the fact that uh, the two Republican uh, candidates uh, did not meet the, the required threshold. And under Georgia law, there's a runoff. And the Secretary of State is exactly right. You're spending a lot of time trying to fight me on, on the past. We've moved on. There's a runoff. You better catch up if you want to if you want to return to Washington in January. Um, so, uh, you know, the Secretary of State nailed it. He just nailed it exactly right. He, he saw through the, you know, the sort of you know, the craziness and the sort of Trumpified air that these these guys are pushing out to try to make it very clear for Georgians that uh, we have a runoff for two Senate seats. Um, absentee ballots are being requested. Those ballots will be sent out. So the question now for those Republican candidates is, do you want to continue to hew to the, the idea uh, profited by uh, the president that mail-in ballots are, are corrupt and not participate through the mail-in ballot process? Uh, or do you intend to actually run a campaign and do what we've traditionally done uh, as Republican and as use all means to get our votes uh, out and, and uh, counted? Meanwhile, uh, Michael Steele, Mitch McConnell, for now, seems to be backing President Trump's decision not to concede. I want to read you part of what our friend Robert Cost of The Washington Post is reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, quote, Based on my con conversations with Republicans over the weekend, most everything McConnell does from here on isn't about January 20th, Inauguration Day, and working with, with Biden, but January 5th, the Georgia runoff elections. To win the latter, Republicans believe the base must be stoked, especially in a fast-changing state. Uh, what, what say you to, to that, that strategy, Michael? Is that the way to play it? It, it, well, it, it's the only play they have, uh, Craig, because Republicans have not made the case 
to citizens. The reason why the race is close in Georgia, the reason why Donald Trump lost is what was the what was the 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 argument that we made to the American people or the people of Georgia? These races are close because voters uh, have discerned uh, and have decided uh, what they're looking for and whether or not candidate A or candidate B responds to that. So yeah, this is this is now we're stoking the base. Uh, and, and trying to keep the base stoked. But let me tell you, Stacey Abrams has done a phenomenal job in the state of Georgia about uh, stoking the base there for the Democrats as well. Uh, and the question is, do you have as much juice as that she's been able to, to generate uh, in leveling the playing field there? Two, the demographics of Georgia, like we're seeing throughout the rest of the South, is changing. I, America is not a static place. No state is static. You may have been all white for 60 or 100 years, but that's not going to be the case going forward. We know where the demographics are, and the party needs to recognize that and be, pre be prepared to play on that space. Stoking a base is one thing. Advancing an argument to the to the people in your community to elect your candidates and to embrace your policies are something very different. And the party clearly um, has not done that sufficiently. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in a runoff in Georgia, and Joe Biden probably wouldn't be taking the oath of office come January. Really quickly, Michael, who who is going to be the person or people that that finally convinced this president? It, it's time to, to just accept it. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> He's his own counsel. He's going. It, does, <laughs> it, does, it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe Ivanka, maybe Ivanka getting in his ear and, you know, daddy, it's done. You know, I, I, I don't know how that conversation goes because he doesn't listen to anybody but himself. He's told us he's his own counsel. So, you know, looking for somebody to show up, you know, drive down from Capitol Hill to, to the White House to sit down and tell the president it's over. OK, they, that's a nice drive, but that doesn't mean Donald Trump is going to listen. He's got in his mind what he wants to do. Um, he's shell shocked to a certain extent right now. He's angry. He's lashing out on Twitter um, and his minions are trying to create havoc where they can, where they can, including the attorney general and his craziness right now. Um, breaking 40 years of precedent and protocol um, in terms of in injecting uh, the his office into these elections. So they're desperate, um, but the will of the people, the American people, have spoken, um, and that yeah. is going to be honored. Michael Steele, we'll leave it there, sir. Thanks as always. You it, thank boss. you, thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.